Bees! Nature's most terrifying creature. Everybody is afraid of bees. This is a fact. Now I know what some of you are thinking right now. I'm not afraid of a bee. One bee, maybe. But when there's a group to a swarm of bees, everybody runs. Bees is one of humanity's greatest enemies. Which is probably why they've been used in video games so much. Bees show up all the time. It got me thinking about which bees are the best bees of all time. Thus, the top 10 bees in video games. Ah, uh, Animal Crossing. I haven't played this game in a while. A long while, in fact. So long that, oh. 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 So, Animal Crossing. One of the main pastimes you have in this game, aside from fishing and bug catching, is shaking trees. Shaking trees will get you some fruit, sometimes straight up cash money, or a piece of furniture will fall out. But sometimes, sometimes shaking a tree will... Ah, bees! Get away, get away, no! Day ruined. This is all it does. You look stupid for the rest of the time playing, and that is the worst! And then you have to live with the other animals telling you how ugly you are and how stupid you are for messing with bees. Yeah, thanks, I know. Maybe it's this insensitivity that made me disappear for 640 weeks, you stupid pile of shit. I hate this game. I've made that clear a dozen million times. But I gotta admit, Hydelard has some wicked powerful bees. You have to get the fairy if you want to beat the game, which means you have to touch these trees. And touching the wrong one causes bees! Ah! <laughs> These little specks do so much damage, and they're just bees. The best part is that they're one screen away from the beginning of the game, so the chance of you bumping into these tiny demons of death is very likely. So then you think to yourself, that's fine, I'll just level up a few times and then go back for them. Nope, nice try, but you're still dead. By bees. Aw, oh, Mario Paint! I spent a lot of time with this as a kid. I was making music, doing crappy animations, coloring, and showcasing my own brilliant artistic side. But that's not what I spent all my time on. It was playing this. Gnat Attack, in which you play as a sentient disembodied hand swatting gnats. And flies. And ba -bomb flies. And these guys. These are bees. But they're not bees that sting you. These are bees that will shoot out more bees! Tinier bees, presumably. It's such a potent attack that even the boss copies it. These tiny bees are so strong that you can't even swat them at all. They're so small to go through the holes of the fly swatter. A powerful bee adversary indeed. And I'm pretty sure they're bees. I mean, they're yellow. They look bee-ish. So they're probably bees, right? Shut up! The Nintendo 64 was a weird period when platforming mascots were around every corner. There was Glover, Gex, Chameleon Trist, and an often forgotten one is this guy, Buck Bumble. Holy crap, this guy. He's not just a bee, he's a cyborg bee. He flies around and shoots lasers. The whole game is about using his bee laser blast to shoot down and destroy other evil bees from taking over the garden or something. And you're probably wondering, how do bees even become cyborg bees anyway? Well, the game has an answer for that. Chemicals from a nearby chemical plant. Duh. But I haven't even mentioned the best part about Buck Bumble. It isn't the obvious bee superiority in laser guns or whatever. It's his theme song. What about now? It's time to rock with the bigger the buck bumble. What about now? It's time to rock with the bigger the buck bumble. This is so stupid and dumb and catchy, and I love it. Even if I have no idea what they're actually saying. <laughs> So even if the game is just okay, you can still sing this sweet ass song to yourself while shooting bees. Or playing bee soccer. Also, bee soccer is a thing. Earthbound. Cult classic RPG. I personally didn't get into it as much as everybody else did, but I always remember one particular party member that dishes out utter devastation with every move he makes. And I'm not talking about Jeff. Or Pooh. You find him near the beginning of the game. You're sleeping peacefully and then BOOM! A meteorite crashes a short jog from home! So you go to check it out with your butthole of a neighbor when suddenly... What's that? What's that sound? That buzzing sound? That buzzing... Like a bee? 
It's Buzz Buzz, and he's a bee from the future, warning Ness and his friends of Gygus' impending plan to destroy the world. He's so powerful that the moment he joins your party, all other random encounter enemies instantly vanish, either hiding like the cowards they are, or because the mere presence of Buzz Buzz disintegrated them in an instant, and then a star man, also from the future, attacks. These guys are enemies from the near end of the game, and Buzz Buzz is the only one who can really do anything to them. And for those of you saying that Buzz Buzz isn't a bee but an alien, listen to what he says. A bee I am. Not. Oh. Shut up! He looks like a bee, sounds like a bee, and his name is Buzz Buzz. Like a bee. And he rocks! And then he's squished by Pokey's clown makeup wearing mom named Larna. The end! Super Mario Galaxy is one of the finest platformers ever made, but some people were kind of polarized by the different Mario power-ups. Flying Mario? Cool! Ghost Mario? Cool! Spring Mario? Um, eh? And then there was Bee Mario. He takes the shape of a bee so he can fly and crawl around on honey. But Bee Mario is not a bee. He's a man in a bee suit. No, the bee that's on this list is this lady. The Queen Bee. My god, she is gigantic. She is the ruler of all other bees, so that automatically makes her cool. At least, cool enough to be put in the next Mario Kart game. At a greatly diminished size. The best part about her is that you need to collect star pieces off of her as Bee Mario. And you do that by crawling around on her, which is actually kind of fun. And it makes the Queen Bee... Uh... It makes her... Uh, uh, I'm uncomfortable. Donkey Kong Country 2 loves its bees. I mean, they're the only enemy featured prominently on the map. Dangerous from pirate ships and lava levels? It's all about the bees. Most specifically, the bee boss, King Zing Sting. They had a big bee boss in Donkey Kong Country 1, but 2's really takes the cake. To fight it, you have to play as Squawks, a parrot who coughs up coconuts the size of his torso, repeatedly. In all honesty, King Zing Sting isn't too hard to beat, you just need to hit him on his butt sword. But what makes him so terrifying isn't his size or speed, it's the fact that right when you think you defeat him, this bee explodes into MORE BEES! Imagine having a really big version of one of your biggest fears explode into several more of your biggest fears! This is true terror. How many coconuts does he have? You know, bees are super powerful and clearly destroy anything in their path. But if only there was a way for people to harness this chaos. Oh wait, Link did that with a kid's bug net and a mason jar. This is such an overlooked feature, but in The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, you can catch a bee and store it in a jar. Everybody else was all about catching fairies, and I was like, screw that, bees. Once you release the bee, he'll hover around you for a while, automatically murdering enemies indiscriminately. But this bee sadly quickly runs off, satiated with the amount of blood on his stinger. Aww. Which is why he isn't on this list. Instead, it's the bee that outperforms the normal bees in every way. In the cave where you get the ice wand, there's a room with some fairies in it. Smash into the fairy statue, and out pops the godliest of bees. You know he's great because he's all sparkly. He's known as the good bee. He's like the normal ass bee, except that the good bee hangs around you for a long time, attacks even harder, and is much more likely to stay by your side. And since he comes back, he's easy to catch back into a bottle and save for later. Who's a good bee? You're a good bee. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Good bee. Kill. Metal Gear Solid 3, aka the best one, really showcases bees. I mean, they make it a point that you can use beehives to your advantage. One on one duel with Ocelot? Some bees should turn the odds in your favor. Even hardened KGB and Gru soldiers run in complete fear from bees. Imagine his embarrassment when he needs to explain to his superior officers why he ran like a wiener from his post. Shh, it's okay. It'll be our secret. And this game had some fantastic bosses, but there was one boss that always stood out to me. Because his weapon of choice is bees. The pain, through unexplained ways, is able to control a swarm of bees to his will. And it turns out, bees have a lot of capabilities that we didn't even think of. There's the obvious stuff, like sting the ever-living shit out of people until they die, or make a cloud of bees to use as cover. But once you get to the fight with the pain, the real potential of bees comes out. Trying to escape? Bee wall! Moving around too much? Bee snare! Using a gun? Bee armor! My 
God, it goes way beyond the realm of plausibility. The paint can use bees to materialize a Tommy gun. Or use them to catch and carry grenades back to Snake. Or quickly create a bee clone to confuse enemies. And when you deal enough damage to him, the pain pulls out his ultimate attack. Bullet bees. From his mouth. These bees lodge themselves directly into your body and quickly drain your life. Also, they're still alive flapping their death wings inside of your torso. You can only remove them by lodging them out with a knife. My god. The pain has displayed the true power of bees. If only there was a game where we could control bees somehow. Wait a second! When I first saw the original Bioshock over six years ago, I was instantly intrigued. What was this underwater city? Why does this man want to wrench this tiny girl? What is this massive drill hand guy? I remember watching this and just being so intrigued by this world they set up. I had so many questions that I wanted to answer and I couldn't- Wait! Wait, 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 wait! Back up, back up! Did he just shoot bees out of his hand? That is what sold me on Bioshock. I wanted to shoot bees at people. How cool is that? And when Bioshock finally came out, it did not disappoint. I used the swarm plasmid more than any other one in the game. Every single person I saw, I was like, BEES! Even the final boss succumbs to the overwhelming power of bees. And while these bees were great, they didn't really hit their stride until Bioshock 2. These bees were given the additional ability of killing someone and using their corpse as a bee bomb. The next enemy that walks past it, the bee bomb explodes into bees and then the bees kill that person and become a new bee bomb. The entire ending sequence, where you need to hold off against an onslaught of enemies, is made super easy with a few well-placed swarms of bees. To me, Bioshock will always be known as that one game that has the bee power. Except for that one time when Bioshock Infinite was like birds and it wasn't nearly as cool. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to click that subscribe button to see more videos in the future. There's also Facebook and Twitter if you want to get more instant updates. And here's some other videos you might enjoy. Thanks!